I, I advise students as much as possible, look for the job that you would take if you didn't need a job. I mean, you know, don't sleepwalk through life and don't, don't say it's all going to be great. You know, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And, you know, I'm just marking time to get to be older. That, so I've told people, that's like saving up sex for your old age. I mean, it just is not a, it is, it is not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. What, what, what are you urging them to do? I'm, I'll explain it. Just what I'm talking about. Now, it, it, it you just, you really want to be doing what you love doing and you can't necessarily find it on your first job right but don't give up before you find it passion is not an actionable word it's correct you know that those who do the things that they're passionate about do better but it's not helpful advice um, and so the question is where does passion come from um, passion is a result passion is an energy um, passion is the feeling you have when you're engaged in something that you love passion is the feeling you have that um, you would probably do this for free, you know, and you can't believe somebody pays you to do it, you know. Um, and I think we mistake that passion is something we do in our private lives, but it shouldn't be done, you know, in our careers, for example. And I'm a firm believer that you are who you are. And anybody who says, I'm different at home than I am at work, in one of those two places, you're lying. And the goal is to make everything you do in home and at work something that you have excitement to do. So how do you find the things that you're excited to do? Well, it's actually easier than you think. What are the things that you love to do? What are the things that you would do for free? You know, how can you recreate that feeling and, and be paid for it? So what are the things that I do on the weekend, right? I love, um, I'm very involved in the art world. I love to go to museums and galleries, but I love to go see uh, dance and performances because I want to see how others are, are interpreting the world. So that inspires me. New ideas, new thoughts, new ways of looking at the world are, are things that interest me privately and I seek it out and pay money for it, right? So does that mean I have to have a career in the arts? No, it means I have to have a career where new ideas are explored, where people are experimenting and trying things out, and I have to explore new ideas and try things out, and I'm just as excited to go to work every day as I am to you know, go do something on a Saturday night. Um, and so the idea of finding your passion is ironically simple because you should be doing stuff that you enjoy sometimes. What is the stuff that you enjoy, and then what is the stuff that you love? Who are the people that you love, and what, are those, what do they all have in common? Men will apply for a job when they feel that they are 60% qualified. Mm. Now that's a risk. Right. Because there's a gap there and anytime you want to get a new assignment or you want to kind of expand what you're doing, there will be a gap. Women consistently wait to either volunteer for assignments or apply for more senior jobs until they personally feel that they are 100% ready. And so it's really important, even though you're not going to feel comfortable, pushing yourself to take a risk. Because if you apply and you don't get it, guess what? You can go to the, the sponsoring partner that was hiring for that and say, what's the gap? Right. And then you're going to be told exactly what are those things that you need to be doing between now and the next time that you apply that fills that gap right. that was there to begin with. But without taking those risks, you have no idea what the gaps are and you have no idea what you need to go to work on. One of the things that I love about working with women is we are natural problem solvers. Yes. If yes. you give a woman a problem, she will go to hell and high water to fix it. Right. And the problem with a lot of us in the workplace is we play it so safe because we're afraid right. to disappoint people, we're afraid to get in trouble, we're afraid to lose our jobs and then that's going to impact the family that we don't push ourselves. Right. And the truth is, if you stick your neck out, if you summon up that grit and you act, even though it scares you to death, you got a problem. Right. And now you're going to fix it. That's what sales really is, is the transfer of emotion. That's what's happening when you sell. You're transferring emotion. And the primary emotion that you're transferring is the emotion of certainty. In other words, watch this. You as a salesman, when you enter the encounter, you have to be absolutely certain that your product is the best, makes sense, it's gonna 
give them the best benefits out there, the best value proposition and so forth, and you are in this state of absolute certainty. So imagine now we have a continuum of certainty, a line of certainty. So we have this line of certainty, and on one side of the equation we have what's called a one, and the other side we have a 10. So a 10 represents a state of absolute certainty, meaning your product is the best thing since sliced bread. It's gonna give them exactly what they want benefit-wise. It's the best deal for the money. It's gonna make them feel the whole thing, right? It is just absolutely awesome. That's a 10 on the certain scale. It is great, the best thing since sliced bread. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have what's called a one, right? Which is, it's the worst piece of in the world, right? It's, it's, it's crap, right? It's, your product is terrible, it's not gonna work, okay? The benefits don't match up what they need, it's overpriced. I don't even wanna be near this piece of crap because I, I'll just feel stupid even buying it or even thinking about buying it. That's a one, right? So here's the first thing you need to understand, that the moment you open up your mouth to speak as a salesman, you start a sale, the question is this, where is the average prospect, the person you're trying to sell to, where are they on the certainty scale at the beginning? Anyone know, where are they? Who the f knows? You must be in this state of absolute certainty because what's happening is this. What you're doing when you're selling is everything that you say, everything that you do, Every tonality you use, every gesture you make, every document you hand them, every phrase that comes out of your mouth are all designed to do one simple thing, to essentially raise the prospect's level of certainty to as close to as 10 as a possible. That's what you're doing. You're, the words that you say, the, the, the presentation that you make, the tonalities that you use, every, any documents you have, sales aids, whatever it might be, is all designed to take them from where they are on the certainty scale and move them to as close to where you are as possible. Essentially, you're transferring your white hot certainty to someone who's at a cooler level, at a lower level of certainty. It's almost like this first law, or I think it's actually the second law of thermodynamics in physics, right? And you study physics, Energy always flows from hot to cold, not the other way around. So you need to be at this white hot level of certainty. It's exuding out of you every pore that you have. And we know what certainty feels like and sounds like. We intuitively know as salespeople and our prospects know as well. We know when someone sounds certain and they have confidence and they're enthusiastic. We know what that looks like, feels like, and sounds like. I just feel like advice that I would, <laughs> that I would give is just like let yourself be so consumed in in your art or whatever your passion is it's literally the greatest feeling in the world it's yeah. like love like it's you know to just let yourself be just like swallowed whole by what makes you feel alive and what connects you to you know the universe and, and that inner voice it, there's nothing more more beautiful than that and it's such a it's such a selfless thing to to share that you know to share that with the world because I think I love that there's um, um, there's this quote I can't remember it word for word but um, this guy says something like share your share your talent and share your dreams with the world because what the world needs is more people who come alive something yeah. something along yeah, those yeah, lines yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah because you know by you just expressing yourself you kind of ignite you can you know, ignite a fire in somebody some, else yeah, to, sure. to we'll express all themselves in some way, you know, like, and that would just, make, yourself that would just make us all like so much happier mm -hmm. as people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just do everything, do everything for love and you'll, you'll feel so fulfilled. The sponsors of Robert Smith's career, uh, only did so after I demonstrated that I'm willing to make the commitment to my career. It's a two way street. It's not just, Oh, here's, you know, the person you're going to sponsor, make sure that they get on good deals. No, it is, they see you in the office, you're grinding 100 hours, you're getting it done, you're, you know, you're making sure there's no mistakes, and if there is a mistake, you correct it. You're following up, you're reaching outside of, of your knowledge uh, to go learn more. When you do that, sponsors are more than happy to then take credit for you. Okay, and that has been my experience, but it has all come through. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta demonstrate 
that that's who you are and that's your priority. If it's Friday night and it's five o'clock, your sponsor seeing you leaving because you got you know happy hour with, with 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 your boys. Well, guess what? I mean, and they're there. You know, you got to be conscious of that that sort of stuff. Okay, I like when they come back in on Saturday because they did come back in. I'm wearing the same thing I wore Friday night, right? Okay, this guy's dedicated to his craft, and so when this deal happens, they're happy to stand up in front of the managing principal of the firm at that time to say, "Hey, you know, Robert did this work." You see what I mean? So it's a two-way street, and sponsors, you know, again, I have the opportunity and I do in my firm and build and develop people. But we have, when we do our reviews, part of what we're looking at, do you have that kind of grit? Are you dedicated to this credit? This is not a lifestyle business. And if you want to make it a lifestyle business, this is the wrong business to be in. Okay? So that's, in the world I live in, that's something we think about and we talk about in that context. That's just the nature of it. So we look for, you know, again, I will sponsor those and even my, my folks now who have not grown up with me in this business. I sponsored them because I saw them putting that level of uh, effort and energy in 15 years ago. And guess what, they still do it today.